Okay, sounds great, guys. Okay, let's let's go over the questions I got from Monday night that I didn't get to go over. Okay, the first one I got is um, the question was I have resale rights weekly, and there's so much in there. Where should a newbie start? And yeah, there is a whole lot in once you go into Mark's back office there where the trainings are. There is a whole lot in there, and it's awful easy to get confused, I'll admit. But where I would recommend somebody would start would be the online university and be the, if it's your first time setting up a website, do the, look it through the cPanel basics so you can get familiar with cPanel. There's not a whole lot you would use in cPanel, but there are sections in cPanel you need to learn how to use, like how to set up the email addresses and how to set up databases, how to install WordPress, those are the most important things. And, of course, you know, when you get more familiar with it, you're going to want to use maybe uh, the file manager to upload files. Of course, that's, you know, if you learn to use FTP, you'll never use file manager again. But, you know, a lot of people just need to transfer a file real quick. So if once they're already logged in cPanel, that's an easy way to do it. But after that, I'd recommend you know the reading about creating a blog because blogs are the easiest websites to maintain so I recommend that for most people that you know if it's your first time website to set up a blog because there's just so many plugins available to make a blog operate any way you want it to and then if you already have a blog or a website I would recommend a newbie start with the internet marketing basics it's a whole section in there on on just about everything related to getting started with marketing online it starts from scratch you know getting a domain name all the way up to you know building a list of marketing products so that's the two sections I would recommend for people that are brand newbies and then um, another section is the the newbie start here section that mark has and it's marketing marketing for beginners tutorials and again, it, it kind of overlaps with the Internet Marketing Basics videos, but you know, it still it goes over everything to getting started with marketing online, and that would help you know anybody that's brand new in to Internet Marketing or marketing online. You know, when you go into Mark's back office there with his trainings, there is just tons and tons of stuff, and it's awful easy to get sidetracked and not know where to start. So those are the areas where I would start if I were brand new. And, of course, if you've already got some experience, you may just want to choose one of the other areas and learn about that. He's got a little bit of everything in there. Okay, the next question. Um, everybody says you need to be list building. What's the best way to get started? What's the fastest way to build a list? Okay, the best way to get started with list building is building a squeeze form, squeeze page form and offering something for free to get people to sign up to your list. Now, obviously, you know, you want to try to offer them something of value, try to get people to, you know, really want what it is you're offering to get them to sign up to your list. Um, you can't just put just anything up anymore. People, there's just so much out there circulating now, you can't use just anything. And that's one reason why I recommend PLR a lot because you can take a PLR product and if you work you do, do the five steps and I know you guys have been exposed to since you were in the inner circle that you've been exposed to those five steps you can take that product and create something brand new from it that you know people haven't seen before and that'll get people to join your list and of course that works in any niche and it doesn't you know I'm not talking about just internet marketing there it works in any niche there's in, in the resale rights weekly in the PLR sections and the master resale rights sections there is just tons of stuff in just about any niche you want now the second part of the question what's the fastest way to build a list and guys I'll just tell you flat out paid traffic is the best, fastest way to build traffic build a list whether that be with solo ads where you pay somebody per click to build to send out a solo ad for you or if you do Facebook advertising, advertising, you know, to lead to a squeeze page, that's the two fastest ways to build a list is through uh, either solo ads or Facebook ads. Um, you can use, like I said, free traffic works a lot. Uh, I actually really would throw in a third one in here, and that would be to do a WSO on a free product that you offer to get people to sign up to your list. The Warrior Forum has no problem at all with you putting up a free offer in the WSO section that leads to a squeeze page. 
You can't do that in the, um, oh, what's that other section they have? Uh, I forget the name of it now, but there's another section where you can offer free products too, but I don't want you to put a squeeze page up to get give away the free product. Um, but you can in the WSO section. They don't have a bit of problem with you putting up a WSO offering something for free. And let me give you a little bit of history on that. I've used that several times to, to build a list. Um, in fact, and did it just last November, I believe it was, no, October it was. I put up a, a free product in there and got 280 some signups to my list just for a free offer. And out of those 280, I had an OTO that was going to a $7, I think it was either a $5 or a $7 upsell. And I made, I think, 40 sales to it from them 280 people. So, you know, it more than paid for the WSO. It cost $40 to list the WSO. And I made 40 sales of a, it was either 5 or $7. So, you know, I, I built a list fast and got profit from it. So, you know, don't be afraid to list a free offer on the WSO section. But anyway, that's that's the three best ways I know of to get started fast is by so, buying solo ads or buying Facebook ads or, like I said, listing a WSO for a free product. The next question I got was, what's the best way to stay focused and avoid distraction? That's really a tough problem for a lot of people uh, to stay focused and avoid distraction. And in fact, I deal with that myself um, it seems like every time I get started working on something, somebody comes along or wants me to do something or I get a call or somebody on Skype says, hey, can you help me with this? So what I have found works best for me is when I'm working on a project, something that I've got to get done, is just to shut off all distractions and not have any emails popping up, no Skype messages popping up, no phone calls because my phones are turned off. That helps me stay focused and lose those distractions. Now, there are other distractions that you face, and as far as you're working on something, you decide to take a five, ten minute break and check your email, and you see this offer about some product that somebody's selling on a fire sale, and you need to go check it out now, or you're going to miss out. Guys, that that's another distraction right there. Is just you know taking breaks like that to go watch something like that, or check on something like that. Another distraction is the WSO section on the Warrior Forum. I've noticed a lot of people will get started with a product, you know, some sort of a method or a system or creating a product from something they've learned from a WSO or a training that they've got, and then they'll go to the WSO section and see, and see something else. The next thing you know, they're buying that, and they want to check that out before they get, go back to their other product, and the next thing you know, they never even go back to the other product. So, that, that's another distraction you have is the word form WSO section. Uh, the best way I have found to handle that is just once a day check on the WSO section and then don't go back for at least a day. Sometimes I'll go two or three days and not even check on it. But in, in the case of a product launch like we got going now, I have to go every couple of hours see if there's any questions because you can't depend on the word form to send you emails every time somebody has a question. The next question I got was, seems like everything I try, I get recommended to have this or buy that and, or buy that. What is it I really, really need? Okay, let me read that again. Seems like everything I try, I get recommended to have this or buy that. What is it I really need? Okay, well, there's a few basic things that you really have to have. And then there's some other things that might help you and you should have. The basic things you got to have is you got to have, first off, um, a domain name and a website. You can work for a long time being an affiliate, but you'll find out just being a straight out affiliate that you're going to miss out on a lot of income because affiliate offers don't always last. Especially if you're promoting WSOs, a lot of times they're only good for seven days and then... If you've got promotions out there that's lasted more than seven days, then your traffic's being wasted. Um, 
the best way to handle that is to have you know your own website where you have the products and the offers listed on there even if it is an affiliate offer at least you can go back and you can change it to it's not a dead page anymore not don't go to a dead buy button second thing I recommend is a, an autoresponder account everybody needs to have an autoresponder account you need to start building a list even if it's just a freebie list and you start building that list so that you can have people that you can contact when you do start creating your own products or you find products that you want to promote there's no other way in the world of contacting these people if you don't have a list and you'll find that after you get past 1,000 2,000 people on a list that when you send out a promo email you're going to make money back from that email that you just sent out and it's, it's it's the closest thing that I know of there is to an easy button to print money if you want to look at it that way that's the closest thing I've found to that is by having a mailing list and you start seeing that after you've got a thousand two thousand people on your list provided that you know you've interacted with that list you and kept them uh, interested in what you have to offer you know give them some value occasionally and you know interact with them and reply back to their questions and that type of thing once you get past five ten thousand and you know an email list starts becoming a regular income for you and it becomes a valued asset so that's the second thing I'd I recommend is having some sort of a autoresponder account and then the third thing I recommend that you have is some sort of you know way of automating some of the tasks that you do daily now whether that be you know creating backlinks or posting articles or creating videos some sort of way of automating some of your tasks now that's that's the most things that I buy anymore I never buy these products on the WSO forum or even in emails that I get tell me about some way to rank a video or some new method for marketing on Amazon I never buy those anymore only thing I buy anymore is um, software products or something that will show me how to automate part of my daily tasks so that's a uh, that's an I guess it kind of goes back to the, the previous question about distractions and when I do go into the WSO section of the worry form that's what I'm looking for is something that's going to help me automate my business in some way or make things simpler to do like the AW Automate Pro that I marketed to, to you guys a couple weeks ago. I mean, that that little program was just so helpful to me to be able to go in and clean out my lists every once a month, you know, because Aweber charges you for those people that are unsubscribed on your list. You, you may not know that, but they do. And, you know, that, that program really helped me a lot. In fact, you know, the first time I ran it, it saved $20, got me... There's certain limits that you're in with AWeber that once you cross that limit, you know, it's another charge. And they, I think it was $20. It might have been $70. But anyway, by running that thing, I was able to get under that limit. And my next month's charge was, you know, cheaper than it was the month before because I eliminated all those unsubs. Anyway, that's just one example there. But going back to answering the question, um, what do you really need to have? Like I said, you need to have a domain name. You need to have a website. You need to have an autoresponder, and then you need to be uh, looking for some ways to automate parts of your business, you know, so it don't take up so much of your time every day. Those are things that you actually need to have. Uh, everything else, you know, is you just have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis whether you really need it or not. I don't recommend you start, you keep buying all these methods and programs and systems that you keep seeing offered in your email and on the warrior form. Like I said, those are just distractions. You know, you're going to wind up nickel and diming yourself to death and never making any money because you're buying those things. Uh, next thing is when you're putting together a, an MRR or package you can resell, after reading the license and know what is allowed and not, how do you know what files you can put in the package? And then uh, it's got more questions here. Do you create a new package or do you add like thumbs, gears? I don't know what they mean by gears. Do you just copy off the image files? What do you do? Okay, I guess the basic question they're asking here is understanding the rights of a product that you've bought resale rights to. 
either PLR or master resale rights. Um, in the second video in the resale rights boot camp training, I went over the product rights and guys, it's really confusing if a lot of them. In fact, I just brought a product yesterday that the guy makes absolutely no sense in it at all. He said in one part of it that you can't sell the product, but you can give it away. But then you can sell the resale rights. I mean, that doesn't make a bit of sense. <laughs> anyway, um, it does get confusing with these rights that people give you with their PLR and their master resale rights. And basically, you just have to look for something in them, you know, that, like in the case of that one, you know, he started out saying you didn't have resale rights, but then he went further down in and said that you did, that you could sell the product. So I just took it by his last statement from top to bottom is what I did. Um, I tried to contact him. He didn't reply back, which is the normal case with most of these product owners. They don't reply back. Anyway, um, it gets really confusing with some of them, and that's you know, that's why I made that one set of that set of videos was to try to explain that. And like I said, most of the time they don't make sense because there is no standard format that people use for them. Other than you know, a lot of them use this, you know putting a star or a number beside their points. But that's about the only format you'll see to them. Some of them put the square brackets with the yes and no's in them. You know, some of them do that. That's about the only formatting you're going to see to it. You're going to see contradicting statements in all of those rights. But generally what I do is I look at the what rights they're giving me. And basically what I'm looking for is can I sell the product? Can I sell the original source of the product? I determine which of those two I have rights to do. If I don't have rights to the source, then that means I can only sell the end product which means it's just the PDF or the video or the audio, whatever the end product is of the product that I purchased resale rights to. Now, if it says that I have master resale rights, now generally, and this is a broad definition, again, you know, in internet marketing, these things don't always get cut and dried, but generally with master resale rights, it means you can sell the package you bought as it is. Unless they say in them rights that you can't do that. Sometimes they'll say in the rights that you can't pass on master resale rights. Which in that case means you can only sell the product itself, the end product, whatever it might be. PDF, video, audio, whatever it might be. Uh, mind maps, Excel files, whatever they are. And then maybe the sales page and the download page with it. But... That's that's where it gets really sticky with reading those rights. You know, they start out saying one thing, then next thing you know they're saying something else. But generally, the thing that you're going to be able to co uh, sell with any product is, you know, the end product. You just got to go from there and backtrack and see if you're allowed to sell the sales pages and the download pages, and then from there see if you're allowed to sell the source files in case of passing on PLR rights. Now, I will tell you, in a lot of cases with PLR, and this is pretty much you know, in general, and it happens a lot. With PLR, if you change the product enough to it's a unique product that you can sell the PLR rights because you've made it a unique product. That's, you know, not 100% set in stone, but that's generally the rule I follow unless they say you can't sell the resource, the, the source rights, the source files at all, even if you've reworked them. Now, some of them will actually go to that extent to put that line in the rights files. But I hope that answers your question. It's basically what you're selling is the end product, whatever it might be. Then you got to back up from there and see if you're allowed to sell the sales vehicles, which is the sales page and download page. And then back up from there and see if you're allowed to sell the source files. Um, like I said, the rights files gets really confusing because people make those up as they go along and they don't always use the same format. Okay, and then the next question I got was, do you need a new domain and website for every product that you sell online? And no, you don't. I work from three primary domains myself. I, you may not have heard this before, but I'll tell you anyway again. Um, I have my internetsuccesszone.com, which is where I sell all my IAM-related products. I have my guides2greaterliving.com, which is where I sell all my niche-related products. Then I have my success with Rick.com, which is where I sell my training and coaching related products. Now I do buy packages every now and then that are on a specific niche 
that I will get a domain name for. Um, I've got one in the personal finance niche that has its own domain. I've got another in the um, stock options trading niche that's on its own domain. I just bought a PLR product that I'm working on now that I hope to have ready here in the next week or so if I get time to work on it. Uh, it's going to be in the um, weight loss, not, not weight loss, but fitness niche, um, building triceps or something like that. Anyway, um, the general answer is no, you don't have to have a domain name for every product. Just You only want to buy domain names for products that you really want to create you know, a mailing list around that niche. That's why I did it with those other products that I'm selling. I've got lists that I've built in the uh, trading options niche and then the personal finance niche. And I'm going to be, I've already got a list, small list that I've been working on in weight loss and nutrition. So I'm going to be adding to that list if it's a product I just bought. But generally what I do, like I said, I've got three domains that I work with. All my IM related products I put in a subfolder off of the main domain. Any of my small niche related products I put off my guys to greater living in a subfolder. Now occasionally if I want to set up a blog I'll do a subdomain which is uh, basically the same thing as a folder off of your domain except you know it's a part of the domain name. And I only do that if I want to rank a blog is the only time I ever do that. Uh, most of the time if I'm just selling a product that I bought I just make a, a folder and upload that product into that folder. I don't go into uh, setting up a subdomain for every product that I want to sell. It gets really aggravating doing that. Um, the last question I have that came from our Monday night call is what in your opinion is the best way to create good quality traffic? Now actually that was a question for tonight. It was a question I got an email tonight. Sorry about that. Anyway, what and I, this is going back to, or uh, I told you guys about the WSO launching and um, try to send good quality traffic to it, not safe list email, text exchange, solo ads, or traffic exchange traffic. That traffic, guys, it it has its place in the marketplace, but not for sales pages. That traffic won't convert for a sales page at all because those people are going are going to those safe list emails, those text exchange, text exchange solo ads, and that traffic exchange just to get credits so that they can send out their promo. So they're going to look at your page for 10 seconds and then they're off to another one. All it does is just eat up your EPCs, your earnings per click, because they're not going to buy anything. You might get them to opt into a squeeze page. So, you know, you could send that kind of traffic to a squeeze page and get some. In fact, I've got one squeeze page that I've, I bought a, a lifetime membership to a traffic exchange years ago. And every now and then I'll just go in and I'll change the squeeze page out just so it's something new. It just sends automated traffic. Every month they give me some credits and it just automatically applies them to the, the website link that I have in there. So just every now and then I go in there and I'll change out the squeeze page to something different. It gets a few opt-ins a month. It might get 25, 30 a month, something like that. Not very many. But I've tried it with sales pages before in the past. It just doesn't work. It just winds up eating up your earnings per click. So what I'm talking about with good quality traffic is traffic that uh, either like Facebook groups, uh, mailing lists that you have, forum contacts you have, or groups forums that you participate in where you know you have little clicks of people that you talk to every day that type of traffic the absolute best traffic is, is again solo ads or list traffic if you have a list built in a niche that's the two best traffic that you can send to a sales page and then again like I said Facebook ads work really great too just you got to be careful with Facebook ads that the page that you're sending them to doesn't make any wild claims. Facebook's getting really strict about the ad still approved now. If it says anything in the headline at all about make XXX in amount of days or something, they'll cancel your ad. They won't even approve it. They don't want any kind of false claims. You have to have a really generic 
non-promising type page for Facebook to approve the ads. It's really better if you're going to use Facebook ads to have a what they call a sandwich page. And what a sandwich page is is a uh, it's a page that goes in between the sales page. It's a page where you're actually either reviewing or talking about the product or service or whatever it is and you're suggesting from that page that they go to the main sales page. Uh, Facebook doesn't have any problem with those types of pages and you know those do really well if you, you know, if you really make a good one. Uh, there's, I actually have a piece of software that creates Amazon uh, review pages that you know Facebook approves those and what it does is you you run the piece of software and you pick out three products that are related to each other and you give a you know a one or two paragraph description of each one of the products. Uh, Facebook doesn't have any problem with those, but they won't let you advertise directly to an Amazon page. <laughs> Funny as it seemed, but they won't let you do that. Anyway, that was the questions that I had for Monday night and then the one that I got just before we got on the call. So let's go over your guys' questions.